Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining our webinar, Subject Line Savvy. Today we're going to go over some um, tips on subject lines, um, also some ideas for the fall season. Um, I'm Jill Bastian, and mostly doing the presentation today is Amber Cleave. Hi, everyone. Um, just a couple things before we get started. Um, first of all, you can see on this slide we do have a hashtag for all our webinars here at Vertical Response, so if you're tweeting, you can certainly use that. Um, also, at the end of our webinar, which is going to be about 20 to 25 minutes, depending how much we have to say, um, we will be happy to do Q&A. Um, this webinar is scheduled to go for 30 minutes. Um, we have found, even with the shorter webinars, that we still tend to go for about 40 minutes with all the questions that we get. And we'll be happy to stay and answer your questions, but you know, if you have only allotted 30 minutes, you don't have to stay for all the questions. But usually, they're fabulous questions, so you probably want to stay. Um, the other thing, the number one question that we get anytime we do a webinar or demo is, is this being recorded? And the answer is yes, we do have a recorded version. And after the webinar is over, we're going to send out a follow-up email, and there will be some more information um, for using subject lines and um, a guide, as well as a link to the recorded version for you. So um, if you miss something along the way, you'll be able to go back and take a look at that. So with that, I am going to hand this over to Amber. Hi, everyone. Um, we just wanted to let you know what we'll be covering in this webinar. So the agenda will go through the importance of subject lines, the components of a subject line. There's more than just the subject line that influences it, the do's of writing subject lines, as well as the don'ts. Um, and along with the don'ts, there are some dirty words to avoid. Um, so we'll go over some of those. And then we will also take an inside look at the junk box and see what happens if you use those dirty words. <laughs> um, and then some subject line trends that we've been seeing, and a hall of fame, and then, of course, a hall of shame. <laughs> and then we have some resources for you. And as Jill said, we'll have a QA and a at the end as well. So um, to get started, we'd like to give you some reasons that subject lines are so important. Um, in fact, some people argue that they're the most important, important part of your email because without a good subject line, people won't open your email and then your message is completely missed. So the three main reasons are to get through spam filters is the first one. If your email is flagged as spam because of a, a dirty word, um, no one received your message. So a clean subject line really helps to ensure that your email is delivered. Um, and like I said, we'll talk about some of those words to avoid a little later on. And recent reports say that 69% of readers do mark email as spam. So it's important to make sure that your email is not one of those. Um, the second important um, thing about subject lines is that they compel your recipient to open your email. So people receive a lot of email every day, um, on average 100 emails a day. So your message is competing with all these others to get the attention of your customer. Um, you have an estimated three seconds of your customer's attention um, where they will decide if they're going to open or delete or you mark your email as spam. So you really need to stand out to make sure that they open your email. And we will also talk about ways to stand out in the inbox later on in this presentation too. And then the third thing is that you're setting up expectations and you need to keep and deliver those expectations. Um, so your subject line should be compelling but not misleading. Um, whatever you're promising in your subject line, if it's an offer, you want to make sure that in your email message you're presenting that offer. Um, otherwise, people get very angry and will also mark you as spam. So we can just break down the components of a subject line real quickly. Um, there are three main components. So you have the from line, the actual subject line, and then pre-header text. So um, the first image that you see here at the top is an example of what the subject line and its extended parts look like in the inbox. So you can see on the left there the from line, um, in the middle is the actual subject line, and then you can see the pre-header text. So when somebody opens their inbox, and I think this is actually from Gmail, um, this is what they'll see, and then along with however many other or above or below this. Um, the second image 
is an example of what these parts look like when an email is open. So you can see you have the subject line at the top there, and then the from line, and then over on the right side there in this light grayish font is the tree header text. So um, it's important to keep in mind when you're designing and writing your email um, and your subject lines what it will look like um, and what people will be seeing. So the from line is automatically populated um, from your account profile and vertical response. So you can change this by going into your profile and updating it, but we don't recommend you do this once you set it because of consistency and recognition. So if you're playing with that a lot, people might not recognize your email and then they'll be confused and they might just delete it because they're not knowing who's sending it. Um, then you have your actual subject line, which is the primary message, um, offer, call to action, that makes the reader decide, this is something that I'm interested in, um, I'd like to know more about this, and then that's primarily what will compel them to open the email. And then in addition to that, we have the tree header text, and I like to think of this as a supplementary message that gives more information, and hopefully that will further compel your recipient to open your email. So you want to make sure that it's a little bit different than the actual subject line. It's additional. If it says the same exact thing, it doesn't really offer any further value. Um, and your from line, like I said, has your company name. So there's no reason to actually give your company name again in the subject line. It actually uh, can be quite a, a waste of space. Sorry about that. <laughs> the computer needs to be updated. <laughs> Maybe after the webinar. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> so let's go over the do's of subject line writing. So you want to make sure that you keep it short. Most email programs are going to truncate your um, subject line to somewhere between 30 to 50 characters. Um, so you want to make sure that the important information is near the front of your subject line in case it is being truncated and that it's not too long so that your recipients don't lose some of the important message that you're trying to get in your subject line. Um, you also want to make sure that you're not repeating your, fun, your from label. <clears throat> so you should probably have your company name as your from label. And since the subject line space is so small because of the problem with um, email programs truncating it, you don't want to repeat your company name. So you've already said that in the from label. They already know who's sending it. You don't need to repeat it in the subject line. Again, put the most valuable information up front, just in case it's being cut off by the email program. Um, also, again, as I keep saying, <laughs> the um, 30 to 50 characters can cause a problem with certain words in your subject line. So make sure that you're not going to lose part of a word, um, like if there's a sale, if there's a discount, if that's going to be cut off. Um, I'll wait till the siren passes. <laughs> that's going to be cut off. Um, you might want to rearrange your subject line to make sure that your 25% off falls at the beginning of your subject line um, so that they don't lose that information. Um, you might want to test your subject lines, and we do have a webinar to help you um, figure out how to do testing, um, but there is no specific formula to get people to open your email based on what you're putting in your subject line. So this is a great thing that you can test. And keep testing because after a while what you're doing may not be working, so it's time to do another test and see what your recipients are interested in. Um, you might want to also uh, use a couple of these suggestions on here. Um, offer a benefit, um, some kind of an offer or an incentive in the subject line, um, and we saw that as one of the um, examples in the previous slide. <clears throat> be timely or create a sense of urgency, so you know this offer ends Sunday. That's something that will get your recipient to want to see what it is that's going to expire or they know that they only have a short amount of time to do it, so they have to read the email now, not in a week. Um, also make sure that whatever information you're putting in your subject line is something to do with the content of your email. That's something that's uh, required by the CAN spam law, so you can't have anything misleading um, in the subject line just to try to get people to open it. So make sure your subject line has something to do with the content of your email. You also don't want to trick your recipients because that will just make them somewhat annoyed that what they're looking for is not actually in your email. So now we have 
we've gone over some of the tips of what you should do. These are some of the things that you should avoid doing. Waiting until the last minute to write your subject line. You might not come up with the most um, interesting or compelling subject line if you have to do it last minute. Um, the second um, tip is something that's really important. You don't want to use a placeholder for your subject line. I can't tell you how many times I've seen people send out an email with the wrong thing in the subject line just because they were going to get to it, but they never went back and did it. Um, so maybe one of the first things you want to do when you're creating your email is write your subject line. That will be a great place for you to start, and that will help you make sure that your email has all of the information that you want it to have. It's a great starting place. And if you don't know what you want your subject line to be or you can't get to it in the very beginning, you can do something like update from and do, you know, maybe put your company name in there or something so that if it does go out, you have um, something that you would not be embarrassed for your customers <laughs> to see. <laughs> Um, you also want to watch the type of words that you put in your subject line, as well as just in general what you're writing in there. So you don't want to put words like spam or unsubscribe in your subject line. That could cause your email just to go to the spam folder. Or if your recipients hit re uh, reply to the email, having unsubscribe in the subject line is going to get them unsubscribed. Um, don't overuse or abuse punctuation. So you know you can use an exclamation point, but you don't need to use 10 exclamation points. Um, again, some common things you probably already know. Um, using all caps is yelling online, so you don't want to be yelling at your recipients. Um, free is a word that can be a problem, but it depends really more on the content of your email besides just the word free. But you don't want to put free in all caps. You don't want to break it up with asterisks to try to avoid a spam filter finding it, because it will. Um, so <coughs> if you want to use free and you're concerned, uh, you can use complimentary or on us. Again, don't do anything that's misleading in your subject line. Your recipients will not like that, and the can spam law won't like that either. And again, um, try not to repeat the copy that's in your pre-header and subject line, or repeat the company name because you already have that in the from label. And then here we have some fun little dirty <laughs> words <laughs> to avoid in your subject line. Uh, a lot of them are common sense, but just to go over them to familiarize yourself. Um, words related to sex or pornography definitely aren't suggested, um, as well as kind of medication <laughs> and pharmaceuticals. You see a lot of those um, get into the, the spam box, yeah. especially like Viagra, that kind of thing. Um, uh, herbal is also a bad one. Um, then there's some stuff that just sounds really like spammy or um, MLM, you've got like apply now, um, credit isn't the best, cash, uh, loans, uh, anything with like winner or awards can also be sent to the spam box, um, you know, that type of stuff. Oprah, unless <laughs> you're like actually talking about Oprah's <coughs> book club. Uh, for some reason, that one definitely. I wouldn't is. put Oprah's yeah. book club in well, the subject line either. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> I just saw something come through from like Barnes and Noble that was actually talking about mm -hmm. her latest book. So, um, but yeah, that's not recommended. So these are just a sampling. There's a lot more that you can find online. As Jill said in the last one, free in all caps um, is not recommended as well. You can use free. Um, you just have to do it in a very cautious way. So be careful around that. Um, and then there are also words to avoid in your email body content that will get marked as spam as well. Um, and those are mostly the same words that are up here. So it's just good to use common sense um, when you're writing your subject lines and your email content. So here's um, an inside look at a spam folder in case you haven't looked in yours recently. Um, and it'll kind of show you some of the things that are going to end up in the junk folder and what you want to try to avoid. And if you look at these, a lot of this is um, things that we've already gone over now, um, there are, we just have gone over. So there's a lot of um, pharmaceuticals in here, as you can see. Um, and there's a lot of exclamation points in here. Um, there's things for casinos and gambling and even some software in information in there as well. So um, make sure that you're not doing any of these things. So these are an example of from the last couple of slides. And if you're not sure, maybe you should take a look in your own spam folder and take a look at some of the things that do end up in there and try to avoid um, 
having your email end up in no man's land. Okay, so some subheadline trends <coughs> that we've been seeing. Um, the first one is the use of discount codes in the subject line, so you can actually include what the code would be. Um, sometimes when people put these in um, an email, it tends to be like an image, and if the images are turned off, they don't see it. So it's a great way to make sure that the actual code isn't missed. Um, so we've been seeing this a lot and just wanted to call some attention to that. Um, another trend is first time ever. So we've seen a lot of that as well, and it's a good way to introduce something new that your company might be doing and that your customers would be interested in. Then there's the uh, case of personalization. So we see this a lot. Um, we've seen it done really well, and we've seen it done really <laughs> poorly. There was one we got recently that had like just the first name tacked on at the very end of the at subject line. At the very end of a very long subject yeah, line. It's like, no, it didn't even have a comma before it or anything. It was just like thrown in there. And that was a little bizarre. Some people respond well to it. Some people get kind of creeped out by it. <laughs> so it just depends on your audience. We recommend testing that, absolutely. Then there's countdown series, and these also work really well with the upcoming holidays. Um, you have an offer here. It's their ho-ho-ho savings, um, and they just, the company lets them know there's a savings coupon for the holidays, and then, you know, four days left, last chance kind of a thing. Um, so that's a great way to send out multiple messages in a series to get your customer's attention. So um, countdown series are very effective. And then you can ask a question. Um, that works as well. We've seen a lot of that. Top lists, especially around the holidays. Um, top gifts under a certain number, um, best performing from last season, that type of thing. Uh, we definitely recommend doing that. And then email exclusive offers are very good because they tell your customers that they're getting something specific that they would only get through your email and also incentivizes people to be a part of, you know, on your email list often. So definitely play around with email exclusive offers. And then as well, mystery offers. We're seeing a lot of this. Um, it's great to compel people to open your email. Um, they don't know, ooh, I want to find out what am I going to get? What's the discount going to be? Um, and then, as you'll notice, there is a subject line in here that had the word free in it. Um, clearly, it worked because it made it into the inbox. So you can note that it's the one up here, use code 32 gift um, for free shipping. So it wasn't at the beginning of the subject line. It wasn't in all caps. It didn't have crazy exclamation points after it. So this was used in a tasteful way and correctly so that actually made it into the inbox. And if you want to use free, um, there's other things you can do too. Just make sure that your email code and HTML is clean, um, you have good links, good reputation, um, and you can get it into the inbox. So let's look at some great subject lines that we've seen come in. Um, these are usually ones that we receive ourselves. We keep an eye on the emails that come into our own personal inboxes because we get to do stuff like this. <laughs> um, <coughs> so one Shrek of a deal from HP. That's a really cute play on words. Um, it was great when the Shrek the Third uh, movie came out. Uh, no service fee in June and soon. Okay, that was in June, but that's a great way um, to get people to open the email and to follow through because um, it's only good for a certain amount of time. So there's a sense of urgency there. Um, your free rentals are about to expire. Again, a nice sense of urgency. A new Mac for college and iPod Touch for free. Uh, that's great. Um, you know, that gives people an incentive not only to take a look at the email, but take a look at something um, f that they were thinking of purchasing anyway to get a free iPod or a free iPod Touch. Um, also, a nice fall example since back to school is happening in the fall. And um, let's see. Oh, uh, here's another nice fall one, number nine. Amber, check out these fun ideas for Disney Halloween. Um, so that's a, that was a great one um, to get her to open the email, as well as a nice example of personalization. Um, it is at the beginning of the uh, subject line, so it's not looking like it was accidentally put there, as um, we were talking about earlier. Um, the next one's a nice autumn one, too. Experience Autumn, a two for ten dollar candles plus six dollar wallflowers. Um, it has a great, um, it has great information in here for what the email is about. 
um, what the sale is. It's very specific, um, and it's got a great call to action to get people to open the email and to go to the website to check out those good deals. And then a nice holiday um, email or subject line, holiday sneak peek. Fourth quarter is rapidly approaching here, so holiday emails are going to start showing up. Um, and that's a great way to get people to take a look at um, some of their new products by advertising it as um, a sneak peek. Okay. And then uh, we have our subject line, Hall of Shame. So this came through um, right around the time of the oil spill. And the subject line is, check out the oil on our beaches, plus $50 off. So um, I was kind of appalled when I received this in my inbox. I was confused by it. Um, so it's uh, good to be timely and current with your um, subject lines. But it's also good to be sensitive to what's going on in the world around you. So I was just kind of like not sure how they were playing on that or what they were trying to accomplish. Um, the other interesting thing about it is it was from a travel company. Um, so we would recommend that you don't try to capitalize on other suffering or current disasters <laughs> that are going on. Um, it just has a very like distasteful effect. Um, and also beware because you can get a lot of negative buzz around this kind of thing, and we saw a lot going on um, on Twitter around this. Um, so that wasn't the best use of um, something that was going on trying to stay current. So um, then we have here an example of a positive subject line that was very timely. Um, it was by a bookstore, join the Barack Obama Book Club. So that's a good way if you want to use something and stay current. Um, then we have here uh, another Hall of Shame. This is an example of some placeholder text and why you don't want to use it. The subject line here is testing. Um, this was sent through a vertical response customer, and they were testing different subject lines or different email content to their audience. <laughs> they just didn't change the, the subject line, and it went out saying testing. So. Um, it was unfortunate that that happened, and then they had to send an apology or an amends email and explain that, that wasn't, you know, sorry for that, wasn't what I was trying to get across. Just wanted to put out those hall of shame and some things for you to avoid, and then as well with the, the Barack Obama book club idea, um, a good way to play on what's going on as well. So here are some resources for you. And as I said, this is being recorded, so you'll be able to um, get this information um, at a later date, too, if you want to. But um, our blog is always a great resource, blog.verticalresponse.com. There's all kinds of information in there for email marketing. And subject line information is part of that, so it's a great thing to go take a look at. Also, our copywriting group in the VR Marketing Lounge is also a nice place to go to get tips on writing, and subject line is definitely something you need to pay attention to in writing, so there's plenty of people there who would have information. <coughs> there's information on our Twitter. <coughs> Excuse me. We also have um, some guides, so you might want to take a look at um, our guides page which this, the uh, subject line savvy for success guide will be part of the follow-up e email, but our guides page has lots of information and lots of guides to help you with creating your emails in general. There's also a new guide um, about testing, so if you're interested in testing your subject lines, you can get some more information there as well. <coughs> 